Pacific is the chosen proving ground for the United States H-bomb experiments here amid vast ocean spaces far from human habitation. The American ship Estes was one of those engaged in Operation Ivy, the first hydrogen bomb explosion which is to be conducted from that black shed. The scene is Eniwetok Atoll, a remote chain of coral islands about to take the shattering impact of the colossal detonation. Elutilab Island was the actual site, and around the shed which housed the H-bomb weapon, all sorts of measuring devices were set up. The recording of information was, of course, a vital part of the operation. In a few minutes now, the reaction to what was at the time the greatest man-made explosion ever set off would be computed by the instruments. listen to an American spokesman on the spot. In less than a minute, you will see the most powerful explosion ever witnessed by human eyes. The blast will come out of the horizon just about there. And this is the significance of the moment. This is the first full-scale test of a hydrogen device. If the reaction goes, we're in the thermonuclear era. Last few seconds are counted. Eight, seven, six, four, three, two, one. The shock waves of the world's first H bomb rush towards the onlookers, and spellbound, they watch something never seen before. Fantastic in its form and in its power, a frantic addition to the arsenal of arms. The violence of the bomb is comparable with the energy released by the sun itself. Later, a helicopter flew over and the pilot found that the island had completely disappeared. Nothing there but water and a deep crater. The former island is outlined in this diagram. The crater, which it had now become, could contain, says St. Paul's Cathedral, a score of times. Other islands of the atoll were stripped and scorched, everything on them withered or melted by the blast. another comparison, the explosion measured about three and a quarter miles in diameter. That's how it could strike in New York, the Empire State Building in the center. Any capital city could have its center devastated. In London, for instance, the giant fireball would cover an area from Westminster in the west to Tower Bridge in the east. the cloud at its maximum 10 minutes after the explosion. Annihilation was reckoned to be complete within a radius of three miles. Up to seven miles, damage was very severe. Beyond that, somewhat lighter. And H-bombs that followed have been terrifyingly greater in fact and in significance.